Well, hello friends, We're working on the Project Mockingbird here, and let's talk about gauges for the instrument panel inside these cars. Now, you are aware that some cars removing and installing that instrument panel is a walk in the park, and the other cars are absolute nightmares, and the 69 Fiber is probably beyond absolute nightmare. It's a lot of wrestling to get that in out. So, in order to ensure that I only have to put this dash in one time, I like to bench test all my gauges. And I've also got another little pickle with this car, which I'll explain as we go, but I figure showing you how to check these out and make sure they could potentially be good before going to all the trouble might be worthwhile, so stay tuned. In order to make all this work, basically you're just going to need a 12 volt source, which is going to be our car battery. I have a couple of test leads labeled positive red, negative ground, which is black. So that, that should be pretty self-explanatory, I hope. So that works out pretty good. And we've got an assortment of gauges here. Now you'll see quite a few different flavors because I have a little bit of issue here. For those who know, these gauges here came with something that I purchased and just not working as designed. That's why I kind of got into this pickle and I figured it'd be worthwhile to show you. But this is the factory fuel gauge right here. This is one of those factory dash located for the... Uh, instrument panel with just the, I just call them idiot lights or the dummy lights. So this is the one here is pretty basic. And this is gonna be what we're gonna use for doing some testing. I'm gonna show you how this works. But for the most part, every gauge you're gonna find has a three wire input. And then that's how this works. You got a power in, a ground in, and then, sorry, a power in, a ground in, and then from your sending unit. Now the sending unit, it could be for water temperature, oil pressure, or fuel level, like in this case here. And all it is is a variable resistor to ground. In the case of the fuel gauge, that variable resistor is gonna go when the gauge reads empty, that setting unit is throwing basically little to zero or close to zero ohms to ground, and that's gonna read empty. And then vice versa, as the resistance increases as the float comes up, well then the needle will read higher and higher. The typical range for most General Motors vehicles are Zero ohms equals empty, 100 ohms equals full, okay? So with that being said, we don't necessarily need a sending unit. We don't need to drop the gas tank down. We don't need to get crazy like that. All we need to do is basically hook up the power on the ground and then short the ground wire to the sending unit, which is zero ohms at that point, should peg empty. And then vice versa, open the ground, which is infinite ohms, that gauge should peg full. That's what we're gonna do here right now on this gauge, and I'll show you exactly how that works. We'll get down here and show you what I got going on here. Now, for the most part, this is the three wire gauges. This is going to be the ground, the odd man out. Now there's a few gauges that has all four studs on it, but typically the two that are opposite each other are going to be ground. Um, they are polarity sensitive, but even if you hook it up wrong, I've never actually damaged the gauge, so I don't think it necessarily hurts anything, but I have to guess at this point which one's which. Now, what we could do, We'll go ahead and touch, this is gonna, we're gonna just guess. Uh, this is our ground input from our setting unit. So zero ohms, shorted out to zero ohms. That thing should read 100% empty if I get it right. It's pegged full right now. Still pegged full. So I have the polarity backwards at this point. That's just not gonna work. So what we'll do now, we'll switch this here to the, to the positive side. Short this out, as you can tell I've got, this is the ground, this is our input from our setting unit. Now, if I touch the power here to this side, that thing will read empty. And there it goes. Right now that needle is going right to empty. And it also holds true if I take the ground wire off of my stud here, see it swing it down, that thing is gonna read full. It does move real fast, that's fine. That's correct for fuel gauges. They don't move fast because of the tank fuel sloshes around, the needle doesn't keep bouncing everywhere. But as you can see, She's going to full. So I don't have a resistor. I don't have a setting unit, but I'm very confident this fuel gauge will probably work just fine for our application for this car. And now for the most part, that's all you probably need to know about fuel gauges. Oil pressure gauges work on the same premise. Zero ohms input, zero PSI. And it creeps up to about uh, 60 ohms, which ends up being about 40 PSI or something like that. I don't know the exact scale. I just know as the resistance increases, the gauge should read higher on oil pressure. The only one that's kind of an oddity is the temperature gauges. Now these guys work on the same premise, but in this case, these has, this one has two grounds on it. Um, it has a voltage in, but as the resistance increases, the temperature on the gauge decreases. So it's kind of backwards in comparison to the other gauges. So that basically if you had zero ohms of input, this thing would be pegged hot. And if you got down to about uh, 100 ohms, 200 ohms, 300 ohms, it's gonna come down 
and bring the, the gauge down to a, a lesser number. So that's something to kind of keep in mind that the temperature gauge works a little bit backwards. I don't normally have too many cars that have temperature gauge, temperature gauge concerns, but just a little FYI for you. But what's going on here is you can see these gauges look brand spanky new, right? Well, this is the fuel gauge that came with something that I purchased and we're trying to iron the, the situation out. Now, the problem we're having is, I'll show you here, that's why I went through all the trouble of bench testing this, is still got three prongs, but in comparison to the factory gauge, you can see this needle's on top and that needle's on bottom in a sense. So basically still empty is still to our left and then full is to our right. But the problem B is that the needle goes the wrong way. Um, check this out. I'm gonna put my ground on my lug up top. I'm gonna go ahead and short it out. So that's zero ohms of resistance. And if I touch this here to here, zero ohms should read empty. Mm, nope, reads full. That's a problem, then I'm gonna work. And that's what we're running into here. Now I said, you can't just simply reverse the leads because we were to do that on the other gauge. I'll go ahead and try it anyway though. Ground that side out, that should read empty. Now look at that, it does read empty. Well, we're gonna be just fine, right? Well, let me show you a little something, something here. So then also infinite ohms, we've already discussed, should read peg full. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that needle, that's shorted out. Uh, that's infinite resistance. That's all the more sweep you get. So just swapping the polarity ain't gonna cut it. So the problem we're running into is this gauge will not work for my application. I hope that sheds some lights on how to uh, check them some gauges before you put them in the dash. Don't ask me why I came up with this idea because I have gone through the trouble installing an, an entire instrument cluster in a car and kind of find out the gauge is not working. And normally, let's just call it statistically, 95% of the time, the gauge is not the issue. It's the wiring or the sending unit itself. But I just showed you how to pretend to be the sending unit without anything special besides just running it to ground. Even the fuel gauge on these old Firebirds and Camaros, both. Go to the trunk. There's a tan wire back there by the rear bumper. The tan wire is for the fuel level sending unit. Guess what? Same thing. Unplug that tan wire. That's infinite resistance, which is a full tank. That gauge, turn the key on, should peg full. And just equally opposite, take that brown wire and short it to ground. It will read 100% empty. Zero ohms or very low resistance will read empty. Um, the other thing you could also do is on that brown wire, with it unplugged, you should have about battery voltage back there in the back. And if you do, probably a bad setting. And most of the time, that's our wear item anyway. You're talking about something bounced around in a fuel tank with water, vibration, and dirt. That thing wears out and goes bad. So that's why I say the gauge is rarely the problem. But if you want to do some tests on it before you put it in the car, that was the point of this video. Well, thanks for hanging out in the garage here with old John and the new Mockingbird here behind me. Just back up this project wrapped up. Got a little gauge issues that we're working on resolving. But as soon as I get that done, I don't have much left there to get this thing on the road. Put some miles on it. Make sure everything's going to work just fine. And give it back to the owner and start on the next project. And I cannot wait to get on to that one because that's going to be a lot of fun. And I still have my high school car yet to finish. So I may do that first. I don't know. But I got plenty more bird footage. Plenty more restoration tips and how-tos and how to diagnose stuff. And I got a lot more stuff that I'm eager and wanting to share. Definitely I'll keep this camera rolling and keep things headed your way. And of course, anything you need, want, or like to see, please ask. I'll see what I can do to make that thing happen just for you. So appreciate you following me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and sharing with your friends just the same. I'm going to get the heck out of here and we'll catch you all next time. A man from Indiana building Firebird 67s, eights and nines. He's got his family working as his crew, a connoisseur of